in this uh, policy introduction. We see on the European Eco-Design Status Report, and we have the honor and the pleasure to welcome Roland Piers de Rafschot. He has been working at the Direction General for Energy since three years. He is responsible for all things that have to do with the uh, minimum energy performance standards for motors, pumps, fans, and compressors. And I'm sure he'll give us the up-to-date report what's happening on the policy side, policy side in Europe. Please, Roland. Dear colleagues, I am Ronald Pierce, policy officer in the European Commission, DG Energy. And it's my pleasure today to provide you an update on our eco-design policies for motors and motor-driven products. So basically, I will lead you through what is new since we met last time, um, two years ago in Zurich for the 2018 Motors Summit. And I will provide you an outline of the new policy context. I will speak about the new motors regulation and I will say a word about other motor driven products where we stand with our policy developments. So for the policy context, um, you may be well aware that since we met two years ago, there have been significant developments. Um, we have a new commission as a result of the 2019 uh, elections. And um, the um, president, Ursula von der Leyen, has um, put very high ambition for the EU in terms of fight against climate change um, by the adoption in December 2019 of the European uh, Green Deal uh, that has also been endorsed by the EU Parliament uh, in January 2020. And this Green Deal sets out how to make Europe the first climate neutral continent by 2050, boosting the economy, improving people's health and quality of life, caring for nature and leaving no one behind. And you can see uh, on the image um, the words of uh, President Ursula von der Leyen saying, this is a very special day it is Europe, man of the moon, uh, man on the moon moment, and I think this shows how important this is, uh, this plan uh, and this this green deal is for the for the Commission. Um, since then, the Commission has adopted its communication on the 2030 uh, climate target plans, or to translate this 2050 climate neutrality objective into concrete targets for 2030. And uh, the ambition is that by 2030, we will reduce uh, the CO2 emissions by at least 55% uh, compared to uh, uh, 1990. And also significant reductions in terms of final uh, and primary energy, about 36% final and uh, about 40% primary energy reductions. Uh, compared to a current target of 22.5%. So it's again significant increase in ambition. And as a result, as a result of this, uh, it is clear that uh, our actions on uh, product efficiency will need to be intensified. Another important element is also the adoption in March 2020 of a proposal for a circular economy action plan focusing on sustainable resource use. And um, one of the key elements of this plan is the Sustainable Products Policy Initiative, by which the Eco-Design Directive, or current framework, will be wi widened uh, beyond the energy-related products, which is its current scope, to uh, the broadest possible range of products and to deliver on circularity. So all these elements will um, significantly drive changes in our policy framework for products. Um, it's difficult at this stage to see to say in concrete terms what will be uh, what will be the, the impact for motors or for motor-driven products. But certainly these policy tools will remain important, and we also go in take a direction with more attention to um, um, product durability and circular economy. Another element, interesting element that took place um, during this period is uh, an audit by the EU Court of Auditors. And their report um, highlights a significant contribution to greater energy efficiency. They acknowledge really good results, 
but it also mentioned that there has been significant reduction in what we could achieve but due to significant delays in the regulatory process as well as non-compliance, uh, too many non-compliance products uh, still uh, on the market. Uh, another great achievement uh, last year is the publication of our um, eco-design and energy labeling package with 70 new or revived measures concerning 11 products, uh, including the new regulation on electric motors. So this was the road policy context. Now I will go make a focus on the new motors regulation. This is a picture of the review process. Uh, you may recall that during the motor summit, um, we were just in the middle of the um, feedback mechanism by which the draft measure had been published and we were looking for um, stakeholders' comments. We received a lot of very valuable comments. Also, the comments that we got during the summit itself were really useful to improve our proposal that has been uh, discussed with the regulatory committee with the member states um, in January 2019 with a positive vote and publication in the official journal um, 25 October, 25th October last year. Um, as a result of this process, the ambition has been raised compared to the, our initial proposal. And one important element, I think, is uh, the world, worldwide premiere that there will be a requirement uh, for motors between 75 and 200 kilowatts to go to the IF4 level. And this will, this will be as of um, 1st of July 2023. The rest of the measures, most of the rest of the measure will apply as of 1st of July 2021. And you can see on the slide, I will not go into the detail, but uh, basically we are extending the scope towards smaller motors and, until uh, 0.2 kilowatts and towards largest motors until 1000 kilowatts. Uh, we are including single phase motors, eight pole motors that were um, not included in the scope in the current regulation. All these motors will be now regulated uh, in the future with um, IE2, IE3 or IE4 classes depending on the motor and the, the time frame. We are also now regulating variable speed drives with a requirement uh, energy efficiency level IE2 as of 4th of July 2021. Other uh, changes that have been introduced to this review of the motors regulation um, there are information requirements for both motor and uh, variable speed drives and this I think it's an interesting uh, progress we require um, information on efficiency at several additional uh, load points at a different load and speed in order to uh, enable the extended product approach in order to enable to the information allowing uh, system designer to uh, design systems that can operate at part load, knowing the efficiency of the motor and the efficiency of the drive at this part load. We also introduce a seven years exemption for motor that substitute identical motors integrated in products, so meaning motor supply as spare part during seven years, and also several new exemptions that were not there that are really targeted at very specific uh, issues that we have identified. Um, there are also some special measures facilitating enforcement for large motors, and I will go, that, go back to that uh, in the next slide. And there are also some artistic convention provisions, similar to what we have for other revised regulation, to prevent that a product detects that is, it is being tested and then adopts a behavior that leads to more favorable results. This is not allowed anymore, it's clearly stated in the regulation. And by this revision, we expect about uh, 10 terawatt hours um, per year uh, savings in energy efficiency and reduction of greenhouse gases about 3.2 megaton uh, CO2 per year. And also this for end users, we expect uh, savings on the, on the energy bill of 1.3 million and also extra business revenue for uh, industry of 0.3 billion per year. So the provisions to facilitate the inspection of large motor by market surveillance authorities, which are in charge of checking that the requirements are applied on the products, 
This special provision applies for motors with a rated power output between 275 and 1000 kilowatts. And there are three measures. The first one is that market finance authorities may decide to undertake a verification at the premises of the manufacturers using its own equipment for these very large motors, because maybe they don't have their own testing facility. If the, the manufacturer foresee any factory acceptance test, the market service authorities may decide to go there and witness testing during this factory test um, to gather some test results that will help them to assess uh, compliance. And the third element is that the market service authorities may request the manufacturer to um, inform them about any planned factory acceptance test relevant for um, motors. So I think this will help um, the market sense of the large motor, which is indeed uh, an issue. And this is why we have established um, these provisions. Another element important to mention is the omnibus amendment, meaning an amendment that uh, affects a series of regulations. These are some of the eco-design regulations that we have adopted uh, last year, including the motors regulation. Um, we are performing some clarifications and correction of small clerical or technical mistakes that were needed for the regulations to be effective. Um, the consultation forum took place in June, the inter-service consultation took place um, in uh, August, September. Uh, there was the feedback, feedback mechanism that has been closed a few weeks ago. And last week, we had the committee meeting with the member states, where uh, the member states uh, approved uh, our proposal after a series of discussion and also some adaptations. I know the text has been voted and uh, will um, go for scrutiny with uh, Parliament and the Council and publication uh, expected around the spring uh, next year. So, what are the main changes that affect the motor regulations? Uh, the first change concerns uh, 60 Hz motors and 50 slash 60 Hz motors. Um, and the clarification is that 60 Hz motors have to be uh, tested at 60 Hz. We also correct the um, method to determine the losses for the seven operating modes at part load and part speed. Um, we are adapting uh, the date of entry to force of some of the information uh, requirements. We have an improved definition of variable speed drive and there is a new exemption for uh, variable speed drives which, is, which concerns um, variable speed drives that, are, that consist of a single cabinet and made of several variable speed drives which are all in conformity of this regulation. So these are a series of um, corrections or improvement to the text with some or minor ones that uh, will be in application uh, sometimes uh, in the first part of next year before the date of entry to application of the requirements. Now, um, very briefly, uh, where do we stand for um, other motor-driven uh, products? Um, for circulators, um, we have a current regulation, so we are revising the regulation. The impact assessment uh, is ongoing and we expect submission to the regulatory scrutiny board uh, in the second half of next year. Um, for water pumps, it's a seminar. We are um, going through the impact assessment and submission a bit later, probably third quarter of 2021. For industrial funds, we are um, expecting to launch the inter-service consultation um, the first quarter of 2021. Um, and for air compressors, um, the impact assessment is being finalized and uh, should be submitted uh, to the regulatory scrutiny board still uh, this year. So this is this is to be confirmed. So this is the essential of what I wanted to, to present you. I hope you found it interesting and I am happy to, to answer to your, question, to your questions and I thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Ronald. Very good uh, presentation.
I hope all our international friends can learn a lot from uh, what we heard. Uh, we received some questions. Let me see the questions, please. Uh, the first question is, uh, is there hope that the European Union will adopt also an air compressor pressure regulation? Um, this is the intention. Now we are uh, in the impact assessment phase. We have already published, and uh, we are looking at the policy options based on the results of the impact assessment. So um, we still um, are assessing the different policy options. Um, there is less energy savings than expected, but we, we are considering whether a measure is is um, needed or not, we are waiting all the, all the options. Okay, thank you, Ronald. Uh, I hope that our viewers have understood. We have a problem with a, a video link with Ronald, but we try to communicate with the uh, audio communication. I will ask a second question that came in. Uh, the question is, do all the 28 or 27 EU countries always follow your regulation automatically, more or less? Uh, yes, in fact, um, when the Commission adopts um, a regulation, they are immediately applicable in the member state by, by EU law. So they have immediate effects. And uh, the, the member states' responsibility is to ensure market surveillance, to check that the products that are placed on the market meet the requirements. Okay, that sounds like a very quick implementation with a, a very complex structure within Europe. We have a, another question uh, that asks, why does it take so long to make an efficiency regulation, like in the compressor, or like to update, like in the pumps and the fans? Why does it take so long? Well, there, there are several um, answers to this question. <laughs> yes, um, I understand. <laughs> first, um, I mean, these are complex uh, products, complex um, issues that we have to address through our studies. So these studies take, take time by themselves. And then we have our own regulatory process with a series of steps with different um, political validations, etc. So it's, it's the technical aspects and the, the, let's say the decisional process is, is long and, and complex. So it's why sometimes it really, it really takes time and we are you know, looking at ways to, to, to come quicker with the measures. Um, but for, for, for the time being, it's, it's true that sometimes it can be, it can be seen as quite long. I, I have a, uh, thank you. I have two follow-up questions that uh, deal with this problem. Uh, as we all know, in the European decision-making for the regulation, the process with the stakeholders is very transparent. And then once there is a working draft, and then you go to an impact assessment, people ask, impact assessment for air compressors, impact assessment for circulators and pumps. This is not a transparent process, and the stakeholders may be seeing sort of a general outcome once the regulation is then implemented. But the impact assessment done by the Commission itself is not transparent. Is this correct? Well, the, the impact assessment is, a, is, a, is an internal decision-making tool to enable the, the, the Commission to propose uh, the, the, the measures that are the most suited. And when we complete this impact assessment, uh, then we have the internal decision-making process in the Commission, and then we come with a draft measure. And this draft measure is um, made public uh, through the feedback mechanism, uh, during four weeks, and all stakeholders can see it and can comment. So I think it is a transparent process. And then we take all the comments on board, and then we go to the member state, and we discuss these comments, and we, we, there is a decision-making process with the member states on, on, on what to do. So I think the, the process is, is rather transparent. Okay, okay, thank you. Another question coming from the fan manufacturer side. Uh, 
the questioner asks, he understands that once uh, a motor or another product complies with the EU regulation, he gets the CE mark, CE logo, which is then printed on the rating plate. And now there are motors that don't have a CE mark. And how should then manufacturer handle such motors? For instance, when they have to be ready for spare parts within a seven years period. Is this question clear to you? Uh, I think, um, so the, the C mark is mandatory for all uh, products that are in scope of uh, product legislation in yeah. the EU. So if a product like a motor is covered by requirements, eco design or other requirements, it has to bear the C mark to show that it's, um, it's the, 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 the engagement of the manufacturer um, stating that this product complies. Um, so this is uh, clear. Now for the spare parts um, obligation, uh, I am not sure. Yes, to the spare part obligation is not um, an obligation that relates to the, to the design as such of the product. So I, I don't think that this particular uh, requirement is related to the C mark. But this is a, I'm not sure if, if I mean, if there is a really precise question on this, then I would prefer to, to answer it in, in writing to re-examine the question and provide um, very good, uh, very good. Because it's, it's related to the yes. legal implications, so I, really need to, 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 yeah. I would have to, uh, have to have a closer look at it. Seems like a complex question, and I will ask the questioner to get in touch with you to clarify that bilaterally. We'll yes. put the answer on our website that everybody can read it. Now, the last question is, uh, uh, the EU will go with the new motor regulation with the minimum energy performance standards for the broader range, starting with a small one, 0.12 kilowatt, and up to 1,000 kilowatt, starting in the mid of 2021. And the question is, are uh, variable frequency converter fed motors also in the scope of the regulation? So the, um, the, the regulation applies to motors that can be operated online, um, direct online operation. Uh, if a motor cannot be operated online and has to have a uh, frequency converter to operate, uh, then it is not uh, covered in the regulation, only in that condition. Okay, very clear answer. That means the scope 0.12 kilowatt to 1000 kilowatt is for online operation of a motor. If yes. this motor is run with a variable frequency drive, it's still in the scope. But if the variable yes. frequency converter is imperative that the motor is able to function, then it's outside of the scope. Thank you, Ronald, for this. Uh, for this answer. The last thing is not a question, but a comment. I'm very proud that the European Union has decided to go from 2023 with the bigger size of motors between 75 and 200 kilowatt already to the IE4 level. This is really a pioneering decision worldwide. Thank you. Thank you, Ronald. It was a pleasure to talk to you. All the best to you. Thank you. Thank you and thank you everybody for listening. Bye bye. Thank you.